Right off the bat, Fargo subverts traditional story structure by introducing and functioning with two parallel protagonists, Jerry Lundegaard, a family man and disgruntled executive salesman at his father-in-law's car dealership, played by William H. Macy, and Marge Gunderson, a kind, intelligent, and very pregnant police officer, played by Frances McDormand. The film opens up on Jerry, initiating upon some actions with major consequences, involving theft, kidnapping, and incidentally, multiple murders. Instead of coming off as a criminal mastermind, Jerry is kind of pathetic. He's very pathetic. He's a compulsive liar. Fucking liar. And he masks his mediocrity with promises he cannot keep. And yet he so desperately wants to make money and to prove himself as a father, son-in-law, and as a man. Yeah. Wade, I, it's Jerry. I... Wade, it's Jerry. I, we gotta talk. It's something hard, geez. It's terrible. Uh, uh, yeah, Wade Gustafson, please. So it's a surprise when about 30 minutes into Fargo, we're introduced to Marge. Oh, jeez. In a point that feels more primed for a proper villain introduction. Instead, Marge is conveyed as thoroughly and utterly good. Almost too good. She's book smart to the degree that as soon as she sees the aftermath of Jerry's unintended chaos, she pretty much pins down exactly what happens. It's in the head and the hand there. I guess that's a defensive wound. So we got a trooper pull someone over. We got a shooting. These folks drive by. There's a high speed pursuit. Ends here and then this execution type deal. She's a proactive self-starter and instinctually independent. She would be unstoppable if it wasn't for the life that she's growing lovingly in her womb. See something down there, Chief? No, I just think I'm gonna barf. Or if she didn't trust people too much. You haven't had any vehicles go missing then? No, no ma'am. Okie dokie, thanks a bunch. I'll let you get back to your paperwork then. For Marge, her objective pretty much remains unwavered throughout until the end of Act 2. She wants to uphold justice and catch the bad guys responsible for what she considers a shameful crime. He looks like a nice enough guy. It's a real shame. Jerry's initial goal is that of proving how much of a man he is, being in control of his own life and getting money for himself and his family. By hiring someone to kidnap his wife, risking her life so that her dad can pay a ransom that Jerry would otherwise not deserve in anyone else's eyes except for his. He starts genuinely, sure, but his ideas have been bad from minute one, as he only thinks about the ideal reward as opposed to the actual logistics of his schemes. I, I need the cash pretty quick there in order to close the deal. <laughs> I, I don't need a, a finder's fee. I need... Finder's fees, what, 10%? Heck, that's not going to do it for me. I need the principal. He joins a tornado of clashing greediness and sloppy vicariousness that continues to kill innocent people and make things worse and worse. Eventually, his goals go from not getting anyone hurt to making sure that he can at least get the money to not getting caught at all. He's sick. He's fleeing the interview. He's fleeing the interview. Uh, oh, he's getting outside the line here. And he isn't caught because Marge shrugs him off after an initially awkward encounter, despite a good amount of evidence placing Jerry in immediate blame. It's only after an even more awkward encounter with an old high school friend, Mike Anagita. No, why don't you sit over there? I prefer that. Huh? Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> who actually lies about a tragedy in his life, that Marge realizes that people can and will lie to get whatever they want. Mike's had psychiatric problems. Oh, my. Yeah, he's been struggling. He's living with his parents now. Oh, jeez. Linda's fine. You should call her. Jeez. Well, jeez. That's a surprise. Not everyone is going to be like Norm. 
It's this growth and understanding that makes Marge stand out as the true hero and protagonist of Fargo. Her objective nature is forced to look at the darkness of humanity, which catches her off guard. Marge sees the beauty of the good in life and can't make heads or tails of the evil done within it. I just don't understand it. Jerry Lundegaard may kickstart the story, but Marge is the protagonist through which we truly see and understand the deeper themes of the film. The beacon of hope in a dark, dark place. She represents patience, instinct, and the good of humanity, fueled by logic as opposed to fear or greed. <laughs>